thank you, Lolade, for joining us again today. Um, it's good to be. It's good to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Like I said earlier, just before I had to do the recording again, <laughs> this is the show or the conversation that we have once a week on Thursdays, where we share tips that can support everyone who is intentional in their space to thrive in a season or through a transition. I am Fola Fire, the Perception Shaper. I am your host. And in my life daily, this is something I'm passionate about, helping intentional individuals to thrive through a transition or in a season. So, but I wouldn't be focusing on myself anymore beyond what I've said now. I will be going straight into uh, meeting our guest and getting into the gist of what she has for us today. So Lola, let's meet you. I know I read a bit of your bio in one of the sessions where you joined us before, but today we want you to be the one to talk about yourself. You have the floor. Let's meet you today. Okay. My name is Ololade Omaomi Olayoju, Mrs. Ololade Omaomi Olayoju. Um, I'm a graduate of Baba Pemeolo University, Fair, where I backed the BSc in Democratic and Social Statistics. I've also completed my um, professional exam. I'm a finance um, expert, let me use the word expert. I've done my CFA exams and I'm just awaiting my charter presently. Also, um, I'm married to Dr. Wale Olayoju. I'm blessed with two children. I love um, teaching, or let me use the word, enlightening people on money management skills. Um, I would say also that um, I, personally, I, I I love cycling. I want to deny. I love cycling. I love reading books, novels, and I love watching movies. What else? What else? What else do you want to know about me? Okay. <laughs> That's basically. It. All right. Whenever I hear people talk about watching movies now, my ears just, you know, tingle a bit because I'm like, do you watch the kind of movies that I watch? So maybe we should talk about the movies when we're done here. <laughs> because if I've mentioned the movies that I watch of late, I think a lot of people have started getting into that group with me. <laughs> but I won't talk about that tonight, but it's good to know that I have someone who is also a movie lover like myself and we take time, you know, during our rest and downtime to, you know, get that entertainment. Yeah. So if you were going to describe mm -hmm. yourself with three words, or let me put it this way. What three words do you think people who are in your inner circle would use to describe you today? Funny enough, I asked my husband that same question today. And I, I, out of the three words I, 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 may, I know that I am, the, the words I can say, okay, this is me, this is me, this is me. You mentioned two out of those words. Oh. So in three words, yes. So in three words, I'll say um, I'm passionate. I am adventurous. I am very, very adventurous. Mm. and also i'm tenacious those are three mm -hmm. words I, I used to describe me awesome, awesome. I'm, tenacious. I'm passionate i'm adventurous and i'm very tenacious I, yeah. I when i have a goal when i have something set ahead of me i don't give up until i'm done i i won't mm. i think that's my choleric side but i won't i don't usually do that <laughs> i like the fact that you said that's your choleric side because you know when i get to ask um guess this question about words that describe them I always say it points to the level of awareness or what you've come to accept about who you are. And I know that being able to thrive in life, it's a, it's a very key thing. Um, knowing a lot about yourself, knowing a lot about um, how you respond to things and being able to use those words actually show what you've seen happen over and over again. So it's not something that just happened once in your life, right? It's something that has happened over and over and you see it showing up every time. So for you to be using the word adventurous, for example, I'm sure if we had the time today, you'll probably be able to tell me three, five, 10 stories mm -hmm. around your adventure growing up, right? Especially mm -hmm. when you were probably much younger, much younger, you know? So yes, now that we're mm -hmm. talking about much younger, let's just transition to that part of your life a bit and just know how was childhood like for you, you know, growing up? What would you say was the most memorable part of growing up for you? And we'll be happy to hear some information around this adventurous word that you've already used to describe yourself. Okay. Um, let me say um, the, the most memorable part of, well, my childhood was memorable. It was normal, no, just there, normal, normal growing up, plenty of neighbors, playing tennis in the compound, sway, whatever it is that you do when you're, you're less busy watching India movies. But I remember that when, when I was nine years old, my daddy told me something when I was like five years old, that when you're nine, I'm, I'm going to take you to Olumoro. I'm sure you know Olumoro. Yeah. You know, one of the, yeah. So, and I don't, I didn't forget. So the day I clocked nine, I told my dad, daddy, you promised to take me to Olumoro. I said, okay, sure, why not? Let's go. He, did, he didn't tell my mom, because if he had told my mom, my mom would have allowed him to take me to Olumoro. As in, why would you take a nine-year-old girl to go and climb rocks? And not even just rocks. Olumoro, that is like, 
when you get to the mall, you can see the whole of a bear putter. So yeah, I wore yeah. my cordial pants, my shirt, and I clothed my dad. And I remember that day, as we're climbing the rocks, the mountain, I, I don't know what to call it, I was scared. But like, I told myself, I'll get to the top. I must get to that summit that people are getting to. And I've seen on my way to the top, I saw people, adults, chickening out, like, I'm not going again. I can't. I don't want to fall. I don't, and like, I won't. And I kept on going, kept on going, kept on going. And I, until I, get to, I got to the top. My daddy was so proud of me that day. I'm like, ah, this girl, you get mine. That's what he just told me. That, like, that. My daddy like, ah. In fact, he mentioned it. It, it said, he it said, it said, it said, it read this story on my birthday that oh. when, I, when I got up there, People carried me. People were sorry. How can this small girl come to this summit? And I wear people that are even grown ups are scared of getting to. So that's one part of it. That's why I'm adventurous. As I'm not scared of doing anything crazy. It's mm-hmm. not me. I'm like, okay, people are doing it. Why can't I do it? Exactly. Max, exactly. I'll be scared. But yeah, yeah, I'll still do it. And when I do it, I feel so happy with myself. That <laughs> so is, that's that, that's interesting though. That's interesting that that's a trigger message, right? That comes to you because you said something that you said, um, people are doing it, so why can't I do it? You know, so you know, you might even still be scared, but you're like, for the fact that people are doing it, then it should be okay to still be, you know, touched on or attempted or tried out, right? So I really yeah. like that. I'm hoping that anyone who is listening in today who has been feeling a little bit too scared about something that a lot of people around you have been doing, if I want to consider doing it, even if you're scared, because she did say that. It's not like she wasn't scared doing it, but for the fact that she saw others doing it, um, it, it encouraged her. And I think that that also points to asking who are the people who surround one? You know, who are the people who, who we let to surround us a lot in life because they ultimately would influence the kind of decisions we make, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's, yeah. that's something we'd like to know from you too. Who, who would you say was a, was a strong voice of influence for you when you were growing up? Uh, I said my dad. My dad. I, I see my dad as a, a man of deep wisdom. My dad is very wise. I don't know. But I, along the, with, at every phase of my life, when I was a child, when I was a teenager, when I was on myself in the university, even in my, ma- in my marriage, you know, it, I remember some of the things it, it has told me in the past. And I, I don't know when I want to make a decision about things. I remember some of the things it has told me and it has helped me, you know, in guiding me to make the right decision for my life. So I would say my dad is um as um as a strong influence. Let me use the word in my life. Until now, he still does. Sometimes out of the blues, he still tells me things about raising children, and it's not even something about the children. I my children you know. I tell them you know, he start talking, telling me about things to do when they are when they are teenage years, how to be their friends. You know, he's telling me that now. Like I imagine, even if they had passed when they become teenagers, God forbid, those thoughts are still in my memory. They're just there, and I can always get. Get, I can always reach, reach out to it and apply it when the time comes. So that's what has been happening in my life. My dad has told me some things about when I was young, secondary school, he told me about marriage. Wow. You know, and now that I'm mar- <laughs> yes, not, yes, but I have my dad because he, he's a free person. He, he says things the way they have. So I, in, I in, well, maybe because I keep things to heart a lot. So, you know, if, you know, you can tell me things and I'll, I'll still remember it in years to come. So he says things or something happens to somebody and say, this is what I want you to learn from this. And he tells me so. So next, so I will say my dad. That just the that met my dad awesome. growing up. My dad. Awesome. So, Daddy, we celebrate you today, and we know you would get to watch the replay of this. <laughs> so, thank you for being a voice of influence, a great voice of influence in Ololade's life. All right. Okay. So let's go to this question that we always ask our guests, um, and that is the word thriving. That's the theme around the work I do. And that's the focus of the WhatsApp group that we are basically, you know, showcasing your personality and your work today. And uh, we would like to know, based on your experience, particularly with respect to wealth creation, because that's something you're definitely passionate about. That's what your work Mm. is focused on today. So what is thriving to you in life generally? And what is thriving to you with respect to wealth, having wealth or creating wealth? (coughs) Well... Uh, thriving means um, to flourish, to prosper, to do well, right? So with regards to well creation, I would say thriving means um, doing well, well in your finances to attain financial freedom. Let me use that word if, if, if it's possible. So it's, it's like, I always say it's a journey. You keep at it, doing something 
to the working on your financial goals to achieve financial freedom. And you know, financial goals could mean and it could mean different things to different people. Mm. Some people financial goals is them being independent, being on their own, being able to pay for their bills. Some people it's um is um um growing their portfolio value or their asset to a particular um value. Maybe for this year, I'm at so so amount. I want to grow my portfolio my assets to so so, so amount. So that's for some people that's a, that's a financial goals. Some people is way higher than that. Some people financial that their financial goals is I want to be earning even when I'm not working. And I want to live that desirable lifestyle I wanted to live. So the, your financial, financial goals differs, but what's the end goal? Financial freedom. To me, that's what thriving is. So growing and doing constantly well in your, in, with your finances until you attain financial freedom. That's what I would say thriving is. Wow, that's interesting. That's interesting. I like the fact that you are able to let us all know that um, the financial goals we all have, you know, they, they could cut across differently for everyone. Um, some people yeah. just I just want to be independent, right? For especially for those who have been dependent on their parents for years. Like I just I just want yeah. to be independent. I don't I don't need someone, you know, meeting my everyday needs, right? And you 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 now went to the extreme of also talking about people who want to build a proper portfolio, investment portfolio. That's like the other end of it, and not just coming out of you know um that kind of situation where you don't want to be dependent on anyone anymore. And it kind of reminds me of. Um, how working with clients would be, is like basically when when I do my coaching sessions because um, I, I've discovered that sometimes people come into the mastermind groups that we facilitate or the coaching sessions and everyone talks about the different things that they want to achieve in life and um, why I'm stressing this uh, for anyone who is watching this is to say look we all have different races to run um, because of the different seasons we might be in life and we are all different and while you might have a colleague or family member who has achieved certain things, even if that's not something that is of interest to you, it doesn't mean that your goals don't matter. It doesn't mean yeah. that your goals don't matter. Your goals matter. And as soon as you're able to achieve that to a good extent, like Lola is, you know, explaining on thriving today, she's saying she sees that as thriving. It's a goal you set for yourself and you have basically achieved it. And at that point, you can say that you're thriving. I really like that. Thank you for chipping that in. All right. So let's go to the book. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about that because I started reading my copy <laughs> recently and I'm not going to say too much about it. I told you just before we started this call that I'm not going to say too much about it because I want everyone to go and get their own copy of the book, their own copy of the book mm -hmm. and then we can have a conversation, right? But we'll touch a bit on the book, but yeah. I want to hear from you because there are a lot of people that... Um, um, maybe at some point in their life before today and they've had it on their goals to do list for a while i'm going to write a book i have a i have an idea in my mind i, I i'm thinking about something right so let's let's hear your journey um starting and completing the book first of all what was it like for you when did you decide that this was going to be something you could put together what made you you know take that step and how did you maneuver the and navigate the challenges of Finishing a book, right? And how do you feel now you know yeah. you're done? So let's hear about your journey. Well, it tied some years back. Let me let me use the word tie some years back. So while I was um the, the, the book, my book, the death was about my stories and some other people's story about how we when we were indebted and how we exited that how we exited that credit cycle. So when I paid down my loans then and I, I could I was able to breathe and I was able to kind of come and kind of adjust back to my normal life. And I started having some money in my pocket. I kind of documented my my my, my story, you know. How I took loans from the banks and I didn't even know how to pay back. And when it, after when I was done paying down all the loans, I wrote it down because I want it. I don't want to mix up the facts, so I wrote it down somewhere on my laptop. On my, when I use it, I open a word document and I open, and I and I wrote it down the basic thing what happened. I wrote it down there. And the the, the reason why I did that was that. I just thought that it would, uh, to get to a point in my life that I would like to share my story with especially young graduates. I just getting like just got the job. But that's what happened to me. I didn't know how to manage my funds when I got the job. You know, I was earning money. I thought I was I thought I was on top of the world, on top of how much. And I like, and I was spending anyhow. I still I still I still when I, I didn't even just spend anyhow. I still when I went to take loans and I couldn't I couldn't even I was um struggling to pay back. So I thought that in future I would um, be opportune. To, to talk to young graduates or people on how to manage their funds. So when I was in the bank then, I used to tell the people that, the new people that joined, you know, when I say young, a, a fresh graduate, an ET or something, or management training with, um, what do you call this thing now? Straight, bone straight hair. I'm like, how much your salary? How much are you spending already? And I kind of share my story with the person. Yeah, yeah. This part you are trading. Those, this part you're trading is, so 
that's the, that's the my that was my that was my him. But last year or well, 2020, I took a I, I had a back career break. I resigned to change my career line. And while I'm even in the process, I said I won't take a break. I will not start work immediately. I just want to take a break and just relax. You know, after spending 13 years in the bank or 14 years, let me just take a break and you know rearrange reassess myself. And then I had the program then, so kind of helped me. So um, during that break, I thought about, I thought to myself that still me sitting and watching Netflix and show max and doing <laughs> and doing cashier, I was doing online courses, you know, just to why don't I just work on this thing, this um story, this um fact I've gathered before. So luckily before me, I had one hard drive. I've been taking around my life. That hard drive me has my important document there. And I plugged it and the book, the word document came up. Like, okay, let me flesh this out. You know, sort of telling fresh graduates. I can tell all, everybody that wants to learn about that wants, that wants to learn about my story and how to avoid that. And I start working on it, I fetch it out. Why, why writing it? And like, why, when you write about your own story, why don't you ask people around you? You have some friends that when were, that kind of had similar similar um, were in similar situation, they were indebted before. Why don't you talk to them? Maybe they're willing to share their own story. So that that will be so people can know that being in debt is not a big deal. It's not a shameful thing. It's something you can come out and say, something you can learn from, and it's not the end of the world. If, if you if you if I have lived through it and I survived this and I'm here now, you can do it too. So I while flashing the story, I spoke to my friends. And we're like, no, need to share their story, even though they want to be anonymous. Like, no big deal. But at least your story is out there. Your le- somebody is learning from your mistakes. So that's what happened. I I got their stories. It wasn't easy because I had to record it. I had to type it. I had to confirm from them, is this what you want? Is this what happened? So that there'll be no issue in the future. And, you know? and of course, fortunately for me then, I wanted to, I know how to write. I love writing stories. In fact, my boss is telling me that I'm a good, um, when, I, when I take minutes, in fact, you think that, you will be there life because I my minutes are always on points and I love writing. I love writing, let me use the word. So I wanted to um attend the course that will make me write, maybe convert my story or maybe to tell my story very well. So I saw some courses online that could do small it was a course I did it was not it wasn't that tight. During that period, I was still thinking of how to go about it. And I saw a friend of mine just sent a flyer to me. Um it's a coaching academy. How to convert your story into a book, becoming an author. That's what I wanted at that time. I, I got how much was it? I told my husband, this is how much I want to do this. So we paid. I joined. She told me how to write a book, how to engage the skill. And, I, and it was by the time I was done with the with the coaching client, with the coaching um classes, I was ready to write to finish my book. So and I just went at it. It was not easy to be serious, to be sincere. It was not easy. You need to be consistent, you need to. Maybe, do, maybe like I said, I'm tenacious. So even though I feel, I feel like giving up, sometimes I feel like, ah, this is tiring. You know, sitting down, I write and I type in. I'm, I'm, I'm not a calm person. I love being engaged in activity. So sitting down to type, to write my story is a long thing for me. So, but eventually I did it. And here I am now. The book has been launched. God has helped me. Had good support system. My husband was there. My, uh, my, my friend at the coaching academy, She's a friend of mine. She was with me all through the step, getting me an editor, getting me you know, the people that would print it. In fact, I didn't know the printer. She did everything for me. And she could have just used some people to just bless me on this journey. So that's what I would say. Oh, wow. Wow. There's a lot There's a lot that you said in just that. The, the few minutes that you used to explain the journey, there's a lot that you said. My brain, in fact, I was like, oh, my, where, where's my pen? Where's my pen? Usually I have my pen when, client, when, when I have um, guests, you know, talking about the experiences here. But I try to capture some things that I want to stress just before we go on to what else you'll be telling us today. Um, and that's the fact that you were very particular to document. That was one of the first things you said. Documenting is critical because, you know, a lot of us go through life experiences and we think, oh, yes, it's somewhere in our head. Right. For those who think that they would eventually produce a, um, a material tomorrow, a book tomorrow or something that you want to outlive you documenting is key right documenting was something that helped you to start the journey so i like the fact that you said you just used to type it and that you you, you probably also kept it on um a system you use a system that could work years back right 
But now yeah. that I know the experience of losing data on a hard drive, external hard drive, <laughs> my own bits or extra will be, please save your documentation on the cloud. <laughs> but anyone yeah. that's documented today, yeah. please save it on the cloud. But I really like that you said that. And then you said something, um, the thoughts and the opportunity to go back to the work, even though you had kept it lying low for a while, happened when you took a break. And you know, that's really what happens to a lot of us because we go from task to task, project to project in life. We don't really have that post moment. And that post moment was what helped because if you were busy, I can almost bet that if you were busy and that popped up, that document popped up while you were doing some serious work, you would have shelved it again. But that yes. post, that post helped you to say, hmm, what can I do on this one at this time? Because you had that free moment, right? And I yeah. know that summer, sabbath is something I talk a lot about whenever we get to this season of the year. And I try to encourage people that, look, you need to take a break. And that's what taking a break does. It, it refreshes your vision about what you can do, what you started before that you can use the opportunity to finish now. And that was what happened for you. And then, of course, like I said, you said a lot of things. But one thing that I don't want to miss out saying before we move on to the next um, um, question is the fact that you had a support system. You had yes. people who were helping you um, to have the setup and you signed up for something that could also help you. So I will still put that on that support system because the coaching um, program you were able to sign up for was focused on what you needed. And that's really what I also want to mention because a lot of us, sometimes we see programs around, we see our friends going for those programs and we think that, oh, let me also you know, go for it. I know that that's one question I ask people a lot when, it, when I ask them. What, what are you doing today, right? And they're like, um, I'm, I'm reading a book or I'm going for a program. I'm like, was there anything that initiated your, own, your, your choice? You know, a lot of people just don't decide properly around why they are doing certain things. They're like, okay, I just need to do a program. I just need to sign up for something. There's no backup understanding or reasoning to why that choice is made at that time. But you picking the exact word is because in your spirit or in your mind, we're probably looking for it. And when your friend was able to send that flyer to you, you connected to it because you were subtly looking for it. You just didn't know that it was anything like that, right? But you yes. went, you know what you want, but you couldn't articulate it. But when you saw it, yeah. you could nail it and you locked into it, right? So I really like all yeah. the things you shared with us about your journey. And I'm hoping that anyone who is also pondering, you know, releasing that kind of, um, a book that you know is connected to their story is not just something that they are researching on, right? They will lean into that. Okay, so like I said earlier, I have started digesting the book. And for anyone who is still thinking about it, please don't think about it again. When we're done, we're going to be sharing on the platform and across our status platforms as well, um, how to get your copy of the book. But I just wanted to start before we go into some gist around debt and dealing with debt, right? Um, my favorite quotes from the book so far, right? And the part where you said love of money is the root of evil. And then the absence of money is the root of all bitterness. Bitter. That was yeah. so that was so cool. I, I don't even know what you used to describe it. It was so cool. In fact, when I was thinking about when I when I got to that line, I, I, I kind of paused and I was like, mm, let me replace that absence with lack so that L and L can rhyme. So love of money is the root of all evil. Lack of money is the root love of all money evil. Is you know, so I'm just changing it. <laughs> you know, so the love will give you, will make you, you know, go into evil acts and decisions, but the lack of it will make you really bitter. That was really, that was really good. Um, because I know that the, the, the challenges most people have around debt is tied to not having enough, right? And we'll come back to that. Yeah. So that's one of my favorite quotes from the book that you refer to. And then the part where you also said, um, it's not about falling a lot of times, because you talked about rising up seven times, you know, when you fall, but it's about deciding and being determined. So the decision and the determination to come out of, you know, the debt, because it's possible for you to fall back into it over and over again while you're dealing with the habit. But you just need to have that decision and that determination because you now said elsewhere mm -hmm. that no matter how huge your debt is, you can pay it off. That was so yeah. good. That was so good. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, when they hear, you know, debt, their, my mind, their minds, you know, go to the fact that it's so huge a thing. I mean, I've gotten myself into a mess. Where do I start from? So I like the fact that you did stress there at the beginning of the book, even I think in the first two chapters that no matter how huge your debt is, you can have it paid off. So I really like that. So thank you for that amazing gift to humanity. Um, and um, like I said, anyone who is, um, 
interested in more gist, you're not going to get it from me. You need to go get your copy, all right? So that we can now have the conversation together. But as we go into more on this, um, what would you describe debt as? So let's now talk about debt because a lot of people probably don't um, even know what it is, right? What is debt to you? And I know you said you did a survey on how people view debt in the book. We wanted to also get a little bit of an idea from you on what you sensed from the survey that you did. So what is debt and how do people view debt from the survey you did? Okay, so um, that is sim something you hold. As, as simple as that, something hold. So it might not even be money. If I, I could owe you a favor. So if you do something to me and I'm like, okay, in the future, I'm going to retaliate. So like, okay, Polish lens is owing me something, it's owing me a favor. People say it a lot. And that guy owes me a favor. I can talk to him about it. But when it comes to in, in finance, when you talk about that, it's you owing an institution money. My name will be institution, but I may even be an individual. But you're owing money. You're owing something. And I always tell people that when you're when you're owing, when you're in debt, eh, you're you're taking away from your future income, mm. right? And you're spending it now, because either way you look at it, if you, if I borrow something from someone, I have to pay back from what I'm going to earn now and in future. So in short, I'm depleting my future income. That's one, that's one about debt. And also, I want people to know that debt, when it comes to debt, debt is not always bad. There's always the good and the bad debt. So my book is basically about talking about the bad debt. But what's the difference between good and bad debt? Good debt is um, you taking money, going to borrow something, borrow money, to buy something that will add value to you, that, you, that, you, that is an asset to you. So for example, if I, if I borrow money, to buy something that will give me money, right? As an asset. If I borrow, if I borrow money to buy a car, and I put that car to be doing Uber, for example, now, for example, if, if my monthly payment is ninety thousand naira, yeah. and Uber is giving me one fifty thousand per month. That's an asset. So from the money I make from my from the Uber ride or from the, my Uber business, I can pay back the loan and I still have some extra money. So you're yeah, adding value to myself. That's good debt, right? But the bad debt is when you take money for consumables. You take money to, for vacation. You take money to buy a shwebi. You take money to do something that does not add value. In short, it takes away from you, right? So if I buy, if I so let me use the same thing as a car. If I buy, take money to buy a car. Yeah. In depend on but some people see cars. Some people see cars liability. Some as an asset. But to me, the car is liability because once you drive out of the car shop, the value has dropped. Right. So if I buy a car, if I have a car now, I'm going to say, okay, well, maybe I feel like ah, my, my friend has two cars. Let me to have a second car. At least we're both big boys or we're both big girls now. And I go and borrow money to go and buy a car that I really that will not have anything to me. That's that is a bad loan. But if I use that same car and use it to into business, maybe I get the Uber driver that drives the car and gets me money every month. That is a good loan. So depending on what you use the loan to do, right? That um that's what decides whether it's a good loan or bad loan. So the book is basically about people that take money for consumables. I know people that take money to go and borrow car and to go and to, for vacation. People take money to do to throw party. I know I was telling a friend recently that took a loan and I'm like, what is what is the rationale behind it? Your <laughs> child is fucking one, one, one year old, wow. and you have to go and borrow to do a party. Yes, sir. Uh, it happens though. Wow. You don't know it happens. You've not seen it before. No, I don't no. see. I think, no, oh, I think when I was wedding, I know about weddings, but not for when your birthday parties. <laughs> yeah, no, for one year. Old. Ah, no, I know. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like, this is a child that will, that will stick clock ten, that will stick clock five. I even know what's up. One year old does not know Jack. You're, you're just seeing your friend basically, right? Yeah, and you. most you could do is just take photo shoots for the child and move on with your life. But people can, so people still take money to go borrow. They don't buy, take money to go and borrow and buy to do souvenirs for their for events. Wow. What is Sovena? What is the role of a Sovena and an event? It's not a compulsory field. Let me use the word. Yeah. Word compulsory field. So why would you? You know, so people borrow money for things that don't have value. So that's where the problem is, really. You know, and when that thing is done, you throw the party is done. People eat and they go, or the, you've done the, you're done with whatever you use money to do. You're left to paying back. Mm. You're going to pay back from your future income. So where does the problem come? So now you start struggling, right? Because even the money I, we have now in Nigeria, we know I'm, I take home is not enough to take us home. So even from now on, it's not enough to take you home. It's, it's already depleted, it's already reduced. So yeah. that's where the yeah. problem now starts, you know. And you have to keep on borrowing to live up to meet your cash flow, and that's when the issue now starts. So wow. that's basically wow. it. That is yeah. Awesome. And 
yeah, yeah. Like you said, you were saying that as you people view sex in different ways. Some don't want to touch it at all mm. because they are risk. Maybe are actually risk averse. Anything that will put them in trouble, anything that will, they don't want to go near it. So some people, as old as they are, I've seen people that they, they don't build anything in their life. It's possible. People are like that. They don't want anything that they don't want to be involved in it. Some don't want to. Some don't want to get involved because of what have happened to them in the past. So for people, let me say for me, I'm not a risk averse. If I if I see an opportunity now that will give me good money, I can take money. So it's just it's, it's just business. It's, I'm, I mean, I'm a finance expert. I take money from A to do B. I make my money from B and pay my A back and still make some extra do. So it's just normal. So I would do some people will not do it again. Say, like, I've learned my lesson. Borrow, I can never borrow in my life. Like, yeah. what if you see opportunity that will give you extra, that will make it give you good money or a, a business that will give, but they will not do it. Mm -hmm. Some people is normal. I would always borrow to borrow cash flow. My money is always enough for me. Let me go and borrow. I always pay back. It's God that person that old that person that will pay. You remember they say, and to Jack So to them, borrow is no big deal. Let's borrow and live our life. You know, so people see that your money and another person's money is to be spent. Let us spend this money. So people have different views <laughs> with regards to borrowing. So that just yeah, the three I can speak up. People that don't want to borrow at all, people that have left their lesson, I will not even touch that at all. Some that see that as a normal thing. It's no big deal to borrow. People have borrowed in the past, so they'll borrow in the future. Who will borrow? So that's depending on our individual perception of debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really um, thrilled with all the information you're sharing now. Because, you know, as I read the book, I was like, there's so much in this, you know, every, anyone who is um, desiring to get over any form of debt in their life or who really wants to understand how to work around debt, they need, definitely need to get this book, right? But one of the things yeah. that basically caught my attention as well at the beginning of the book was how you described what debt was. Um, and I, I had to write it down somewhere. I was like, anything you ask from anyone to use temporarily till later, anything, I, I underlined it, anything you ask from anyone. And the way it was, why it was coming to me is because, you know, you said something that you said doesn't have to be money. You can also owe a favor, right? That's interesting. Because I was not thinking about all those times that people, you know, borrow cars from their friends and like, oh, you know, I'm in town. I just want to, you know, move around some places. Can you lend me your car? You know, I'm like, that is also a debt, even though it's not cash, because most yeah. people, could be um, putting debt mostly in the place of um, something that um, is monetary directly, you know, something in transfer across accounts and things like that. And then when you also mention anyone, anyone, because a lot of times, a lot of times, people do not appreciate debts from their closest family members and friends. Mm, true. And that is usually where a lot of people default because in yes. their minds, as long as it's not some entity far from them, it's not a debt. It's just what the person should have done for me. You know, so I have to actually write it down. That like anyone, so even if it's from your parents, from your child, yeah. <laughs> you know, because those of us that have teenagers now, when our teenagers start working, <laughs> even if you say your maybe 10 there and then or 20 there, that has become a debt, even though it's from your child. I don't yeah. say, oh, I carried it for nine months, right? <laughs> but the fact yeah. that it was supposed to be returned, right? It is yeah, a debt. Yeah. So I really like the fact that you said that. And, um, you know, it's interesting how, you know, understanding debt, one of the critical things you also said is knowing that there's good and then there's the bad. That's, yeah. you know, being open to what the good could bring you is very important. And why I like that part that you mentioned is because the mastermind group we have at the end of the year is the study of science of getting rich. And that's where we focus on wealth creation. And I know that for you to really set up properly um, to create wealth, you need to have an understanding of good debt. You need to have an understanding of good debt because you can create much money with what you say, but you can only go as far. But you will go further if you have an understanding of how to apply good debt because you said something, if I can take from A and do something with B, that when I repay A, I will get my interest back, then why can't I do that, right? And that's the, um, the, 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 the decisions you make when you're actually creating wealth. So I really like that. All right. Another thing mm -hmm. we want to hear from you today is your story. 
<laughs> there's a story around your own debt recovery. I mean, getting over debt, what got you into it? I read a bit of it in the book and I almost felt like drawing the Maya while you were referring to the book and knocking his head. I said, why are you putting someone into such a <laughs> situation? <laughs> I followed him willingly. <laughs> So let's, didn't drag you. let's get a summary of that story because <laughs> there could be a lot of people who are watching the replay or even joining us live right now who will be saying, I have a friend like that in my life who is always taking me ah. to some places and I'm getting myself into more financial trouble. But let me just quickly read um, a comment that I see here on, on Facebook. Uh, West of Gunfire is saying that, oh, are you serious? Borrowing money for a one-year-old party, fantabulous. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you for sharing that. And um, True Blood, thank you for your contribution as well. So let's hear the summary of your story just before we round off tonight. Oh, okay. I'll try to make it um, brief, an abridged yeah. version. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when I started my career some years back, right? So, uh, like I said, I, 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 was, I lived a normal, normal childhood, like, normal childhood, nothing extravagant, normal child and everything, normal childhood uh, stories and everything. So, but when I started working, I started working with um, my first uh, place of work. I was earning 18,000 Naira. And I was a consulting firm, 18K. I was living normal life. You drive my daddy's car to work, come back, everything. And then I got a job in a bank, you know, went to training school, would have paid me 30,000 naira. Still normal. My brain was still intact. Everything was still intact. And then when I finished training school, I became a full staff of a bank and they paid my salary. Ask me how much the salary is. <laughs> 110,000 naira. That's, that's removed the screw in my head. You know, and I, with that money, I thought that this is like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like the best thing that can ever happen to me. One ten thousand, one ten k then was a lot, yeah. So, and then I, you, you just had everything you, you wanted. Buy this, buy then I'll buy this, buy that. You know, you just living your normal life. And then I was, I didn't, I didn't grow up in Lagos, right? I grew up in Abeokuta. So when I came to Lagos, the people that are my friends and people that I met in the training school, right? So the people are the people that are my that we move around, we do everything together. Now, because we met in training school, we started working together. So they became my friends. So when the, this came out, ah, if one bank is giving people credit card, credit, you know when you wear credit cards in the movies? A credit card, let's go, and, let's go and get this, you know. So my friends said, let's go and get credit card. People have taken it, so our mates are taking it. Let's go and do it. I didn't think about the impact, the what to do to my finance. I didn't think about, I didn't have a plan. I just followed my friend. He took the credit card. We didn't even follow us. They gave us the credit card. Wow. And they gave me a credit card of 400,000 naira. Wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. I gave a salary of 110,000. And um, of course, as a big as a, as a as a big girl that I am then, my mind, yeah. I went shopping. Bought this, bought that and everything. I know so months down the line, I know so my parents have to say, ah, that day you need to, that's the side working. You have to buy an asset, to buy land, buy this. You know, I didn't tell my friends that I bought money. I'm taking credit card of 400k that I finished. I didn't tell them that. <laughs> so... That's, ah, another bank is giving out money. Let us go and take it to. Okay, okay, let's go now. I follow them. <laughs> What's the bank B? Let me see one that one. The first one credit card is bank A. This second one is bank B. And then we went to bank B to go and take a loan. I took a loan of 500000 there. So when I told my brother, ah, okay, that I want to buy the land. Where can I, where can I buy the land now? They told me the amounts. I sent the money home for them to take the land for me. They, my money, I still had balance in my account. He told me to pay back part of the credit card. Mm -mm, I went, I went, I went to the market. I went shopping again, you know. And then just few weeks after that, second loan was disbursed to me. Then my employer said, all entry levels must have brand new cars. Wow. And they booked the loan for us. See, I didn't even think about the implication of that, the that third loan because I suffered in Lagos. When I heard that news of getting a brand new car, I was happy because rain has beaten me before mm. in that lake. So if you walk on the island, I'm sure you know what it is when yes, it rains. Yes, yes. When you like a car, you yeah. are like you're in a lagoon. You don't even have to get to the office. Okay. So when I said brand new car, my I was one of the first sets that got the car. I didn't even think about my my in my in 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 the in the, in, in the palace of the Gen Z. I can't lack I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. I don't have money. And I just went to get the car, mm -hmm. you know, and they told me how much I'll be paying for months. The problem that came when they ended to pay the insurance, I couldn't even afford to pay the insurance of the car. Wow. I had to tell the broker that I want to split the money into two, you know, 
pay part now, pay part, and they agreed. And now, so by the time, after the first month, let me use the word, of the paying back my car, I had to pay back my minimum balance on the credit card. I had to pay the bank B that gave me 500000 dollars pay the because the time loan just for one year. I had to pay back for my for the car, the brand new car that I got. And by the time I was done with all the debits, I lit I didn't have anything left in my account. I could barely eat. It was that bad. But because I have so many clothes, so much clothes, gold, you know, people didn't know that I was suffering. So that I could go all day without eating anything. <laughs> I could go all day without eating anything, you know. Wow. But that, that was my story. And um, unfortunately, what, what, what would say um, led me to that is one, two things, basically. My habits. I had, a, I had this bad habit then. I was, I was an impulse spender. When I say I buy. When I see a buy. So that's why it was easy for me to borrow and buy. Because money, in fact, my mother used to call me, I don't know. When does not stay in my hand? When I see, I buy. When I see, I spend. So that's one of the reasons that, that pushed me to the number two. I would say lack of financial literacy. So that's why I like I like telling people, when you when you, you need to invest in yourself, don't see financial literacy as a, as a, how would I put it, as something that is a, as a cost to you. See, see it as an investment in your life. Because that's what, if I had known better, I would have acted better, right? But I didn't, I didn't know better. That's why I could spend and still when I had to borrow. So financial literacy. And um, fortunately for me, when, when, when I became broke, I couldn't, I couldn't pay my pay back the loans. So when you have money that you can see, and it's cost to cost spend that, because you have money in your wallet. When you don't have money in your wallet, what, what are you spending on impost on? Not saying. So the broken that broke period of my life chased that spirit of people spending out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to determine to be financially traded, to be financially traded. So learn maybe that's maybe that's what even pushed me to learn CFA. I was now focused on what is this thing? Money is not a spirit. Is it spirit? It's not a spirit. It's the way you the way you treat money. Yes, but money is tangible. Is you you have to learn about it in a way. So I kind of invested in myself. I joined some, I joined, um, um, what do you call this now? This um, investment clubs. I joined investment clubs, you know. I needed to, of course, change my friend. I had to, I had to allow my wife to live my life before I get more into more trouble. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to change my friends. Of course, I had to get over my bad behavior. I had to invest into my life. I joined financial um, um, investment clubs to learn more about, about investments, where to put your money, how to, you know, how to, how to just like live a normal, no, no, normal, Sha. How to do, do things better. Let me use the word. How to, so I learned how to do things better with my, with my finance. And of course, I had some, um, other thing, support, not really support them, but people that are, that, that are better in what they're in finance and they could talk to me. Like one of my boss had called me before and said, day, since you said working in this bank, how much have you, have you saved? I was looking at this man, I don't know, I'm even owing. <laughs> How much have you seen? <laughs> I was looking at her. She told me every month minimum you pay. You pay after your tight. You spend twenty thousand. You spend. You say twenty percent. She was advising me. Mama like her. I wish you knew the truth. Mm. But you know. But I learned. If I if I not if I maybe if I had met her earlier, you know. She was. She told me that she does not buy things for my salary. Why would she do that? She has to invest. It's what she gets for my investment. And she used to buy things she wants. So she, if you see, she, she, if she sees a phone, she wants to buy an iPhone, let's iPhone. If her returns in investment does not match the money to buy her iPhone, she won't. She has to invest or she had the return. Is it dividends? Is it um, a sipping returns? Or whatever it is that she will not put together. And I should always make sure, I should always make sure I should not touch my principal. I should always spend for my Returns. So those things I learned during, during that period. But people don't know. Yeah, I'm dressing fine, wearing fine clothes. Yeah, you know, people don't know that this girl is chopping biscuit and water every day. Exactly. <laughs> but here I am now. You know. Yeah. You're better for it. Yeah. So that's basically my story. Wow. Yeah. That is incredible. See how glued I am. I'm like, oh <laughs> gosh, I'm just taking it all in, like water from a water hose, right? So much, so much. You've dropped so much and you've basically answered the question that I was going to ask on how to break the cycle. Um, because you just shared how you broke the cycle. Because a lot of people could be listening to the story and like, okay, so how did you deal with it? How did you deal with it? Right. But before we yeah. talk about pick out the things you mentioned on how you dealt with it, I also want to stress the fact that you know, when you identified what your trigger root cause was, and that's the fact that you were impulsive. I mean, 
I, when I read the story in the book, I was a little bit confused. I was like, wait a minute, you mean people have friends that would tell them, let's go and get this, and they would just follow the person. Ah. You didn't have friends like that. <laughs> I still have them, but they've known now. Get behind me. So they don't even come near me again to go and tell me things, yeah. but there's still some of them are still around. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know, so you, you were able to identify the fact that you had such a um, contact in your circle who, who had a strong influence on your choices when it comes to money. So that that is also a key thing. And then you said that you were also impulsive with, with, with money. But the interesting thing is that when you were going through the season of being broke, the impulsive nature wasn't showing up because there was even no money to spend. So most of mm -hmm. what we find as challenging around money, um, when we have the money, the truth is when we really do not have the money there and then it doesn't show up, we ask ourselves, if it's not a constant, with or without money, then it's not something that is much, that cannot be dealt with. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Because if it mm, doesn't yeah. show up when you don't have money, then it's really something you can deal with even when the money's there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I really like the fact that you, you shared that. And um, yeah. you did say something that, apart from the fact that you had a habit like that, so one thing is checking out your habits because I was also going to ask a little bit earlier, but I decided that we should listen to you first, you know, and, and it's great that we listen to you that what really puts people in bad debt situation, right? And really, really bad debt situation. So you've talked about the habit, all right? And some people, it could be impulsive. Some people, it could be the circle of friends they have. They're just trying to, in the words of um, the financial um, person, the financial planner we have on the faculty, she would say something like living up to the Joneses. That's really what makes a lot of yeah. people. But then you just want to, you know, prove a lifestyle to people who don't care, right? Um, that's yeah. a challenge that a lot of people have. And then you talked about um, the fact that you didn't even know better. That now you're making better decisions because you know better. And yeah. you said that really is the beginning of this breaking the cycle you must know better and until you know better you cannot break the cycle of the debt that people yeah. go in or that you go into so you said that of course you talked about the decisions you know how to make better decisions of course and then you made sure that you got yourself into circles where the conversation was about creating wealth getting yeah. more, you know having much more to spend and i can say that that is, that is incredible. That is incredible. Thank you for, for sharing that. I know a lot of people will want to know the, the little details, the little details. We'll come to the end of how, so, how Lolade can support you, but you're going to say something. Well, yeah, there's something I, 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 I need to say also, I need to point out that, and I, I think I wrote it in my book, that even the journey when I was living that, yes, my, yeah, I could break, I could um, adjust my, 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 how do, how do I call it now? I could, um, so I could, um, What's the word I want to use now? Yes, I joined a, a, an investment clubs and I worked on my on, on my impulse spending left speed left me as the word speed left me. But also at the part I would say that um, I, I I cannot afford but to mention it the part I in the, the part of prayer yeah I left the that cycle basically because I prayed and I got an idea a business idea in the place of prayer so I, I must mention that so faith without works is death yeah so I I was doing something myself to make myself better but also as a place of faith that I used because I was really overwhelmed and I had to pray about it. And fortunately, well, God always, God always show up. He showed up for me. He told me, he honestly told me something in the place of prayer, a business idea that made me to be getting extra money that I could, I was using to support myself and eventually I could pay off my debt. You know, so I need to mention that to people that it's not really by my power, but my might, hmm. by the spirit of the Lord. So awesome. let's go that out. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. But I want to stress something. Yeah. So while I like the, the emphasis on God, because I mean, I always, we always stress ideas and things that connect to people of faith. So if you are definitely a person yeah. of faith, you don't want to miss out the part of praying. Um, but yeah. I also want to emphasize the fact that praying is not all that God will be where she is. No. Because no. she said something, the Holy Spirit gave her an instruction. You can have an instruction and box it and archive it and do nothing about it. The thing is that a lot of people today, even without prayers, are getting instructions and are doing nothing about it. And they're still where they were years ago, right? With no change. So what made a difference for you having God in the picture is that he gave you a specific direction <laughs> for the part yeah. that you took in obeying. Because if you didn't, yeah. we won't be having this conversation today. <laughs> <We're not. laughs> I'm telling you. So that was really, that was incredible. And I can say that um, when it comes to the journey we've also had as a family of finance, there's been a huge part um, that we can tell you that God has also done. Though there's an orchestration to opportunities 
that only God does, right? And there's also mm -hmm. one that comes because he has packed up, um, let me say, an interest in your heart. It's like saying when we talk about the law of attraction, you know, a lot of people will use the law of attraction to describe it. You say, until you start to think about something, you will not, and be specific, you might not even notice it around you. It's like say, when you want to start looking for it to buy a particular kind of car, you go out, you see the car everywhere. You know, so that's basically what God does also in the place of prayer. He will give us the wisdom. And then because he sparks the vision in our hearts, we can easily spot opportunities when they are there. But yes. a lot of people are missing out on that because when it comes, they're not taking action. They're not executing. Mm. They're not executing. So while I would definitely encourage everyone who is still trying to be like, let me even get over the debt that I have. Get Lonadi's book. But I will tell you, before we start talking much more about the science of getting rich that we're having later in the year, you need to join the wait list for that because it's been so transformational in Mastermind Group that we have had participants from previous years sponsor seats for people in the following year <laughs> because they've been that blessed with the outcomes that they've experienced in their lives. So I'm looking forward to us, you know, um, having the next one we're going to be having October, November this year. So Lonadi, we're, Lonadi, we're not going to let you go. Uh, we're going to let you talk just a bit about um, um, a resource, a CEDA resource. You did mention it on your last session with us, but what we want you to talk about is not just what the experience was like for you. Maybe one, get, one thing you took out from the mastermind group that you were part of last year, you know, and how it might have helped you, you know, achieve anything specific, you know, at that period mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Um, basically, I, I would say two things that um, I always remember anytime you talk about the uh, mastermind class. So, uh, two things, yeah. The first one was the one I one I had with you, right? That's um, I was on a career break then. You remember very well. I was not working and had I wanted to change my career. I had this plan for my life, what I want to do, and he told me. So, what are your goals? Have you? Why don't I break down the goals into the short term goals, the mid term, and the long term? And when I do, when I'm done with the short term, I move to this and like that. I could it will help me with my experience. So what? Why don't I learn this first? Then from there, I do this. I so I've been running with it. So now, wow. yes, I'm running with it. Yeah, because I, I know what I need to achieve in the, in the near term, and I know that after I achieve that in the near term, I can move to my mid term goals. You know, and then from then the long term goals, right? Because my clients have to be, they have to be global clients. I can't be seven people in a year. <laughs> yes, now nah. that's the plan. Now you remember, yeah, so I, it, it helped me to break down my goals into the short term, and I'm still running. Like I said, I'm still running with it. And second, the second thing that um I took away with I took away from the program was the law of gestation, and I always say it. It removed every form of pressure in my life. You know, growth takes time. You, you mentioned that there's a, 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 a time for um, a time, the way, the, the way you put it, a time for starting something, a time of completion, I remember. And I should not, you should not compare yourself to, even though you're doing the same thing, someone has gone far ahead of you and you put yourself under pressure and say, ah, I'm not like this person, I'm not like this person. No, it takes time, growth takes time. And that's also has kind of helped me in my career. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I didn't put myself on any pressure again. So when I see someone doing better than me, I'm like, i has been there for long, it has grown. He has had so many experiences that have pushed him to that level. So let me enjoy the space where I am. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm going to be like that about my career, about things, but I'm not going to put myself under so much pressure by, sent, by setting on necessary targets for myself. Let me learn, let me grow, you know, and take my time and grow well than me comparing myself to another person. So that is very key for me. I remember last, it wasn't two or three weeks ago again, and I, I was going for a program, I was scared, and I had your voice in my head. I said, don't be afraid of greatness. Ah, that thing, eh? I was somebody was supposed to host me, Dr. Mr. Kalanu and I was like, oh, oh nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, and I was scared. And I was going, like, I just said your voice, like, don't be scared of greatness. I couldn't even post the flyers on my status. It's like, ah. just said that voice, it kind of liberates me. So it's still, the thing is still ongoing. The effect is still ongoing. Yeah, so that's it. Awesome. Wow. And we like to hear about how the resources we've put out have helped our guests or other people who have crossed our path of the group. So thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm really happy to see that some of those things are still actually showing up today in your life. Well done. Yeah. Because you've been intentional. Thank you. You've been intentional. Yes, thank you. You've been great. I'm so proud of you. 
All right, so let's lock into all the things we talked about today. How do we connect with you, right? So the first thing is, how do we get the book? <laughs> how do we get the book, right? And then is if there's anything else, because I know for some people, they're going to be like, okay, I can read your book. But after the book, I need someone to handhold me out of this situation that I'm in. So how can we have that connection set up and the book and a possible connection with you if someone really needs this? Okay. Um, the book um, is on Amazon for people out of the country. The book also is on seller for people within Nigeria. There's the ad, ad, um, like ad cover and paperback and there's the e-copy. So whatever it is you want, the link will be posted when she posts the, um, the, the program on the website. Um, so the link will be there. Say so that we want to order, you can get your books from there. And also for the, to get me, it's also in the book, that my phone number and the email, the, my handle, my Instagram handle. So you can always DM me on my Instagram and I always reply, you know, hopefully I get to a time where I'll be doing sessions with people. But when I want to reach out to me, everything's in my book. If I'm back about to reach me, email, what in, um, my Twitter handle, my Instagram handle, my, yeah, everything in the book you want to reach me. Okay, great. That's great. Because what we're going to do is just share and we're going to have a team member just look you up and share your Instagram handle. Um, and maybe Twitter as well. And then we'll come okay. with get the information with the fly and the cover of the book so that everybody can get into the zone. Okay, so it's time mm -hmm. to release you. And we just want to beg of you, plead with you to leave us with some final words today. What do you have to leave us with today that can really help someone in this space, right? Or someone who is maybe just getting out of school because you know you said at the beginning that your initial target were people who were coming fresh from school and who were in the situation you were in when you got yourself in that mess right so but what kind of um word final words today could you consider leaving us with okay so i the my final was be from my experience yeah because of um what happened so for people that are just live in school you have to be mindful of the people you surround yourself with that is key. Your friends will determine your financial journey in life. If you're with people that how I had then, it's the path to, to destruction. And if you have to be with people that have long-term goals for their money, that have long-term goals for what they have, for their influence, I mean, you're, 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 you're in, in a good place. So your circle of friends will tell me a lot about your, finance, your financial journey. Also, I will say, that don't ever allow your your out your your um outflow to exceed your income. Once you start allowing what you spend to exceed what you earn, you're gonna fall in trouble. You're gonna be in big trouble. And that also, well, that's your decision to make. Really, not anybody. That's your decision to make. So you have to be very careful of what you see on social media. Don't don't put yourself under pressure. Learn, save. You need to save. You need to as young as you are, you can start um. To, to, to start investments, you don't need something very big or one mighty amount to start. You can start with the little you have. There are so many opportunities out there that you can use to start um, to start building your portfolio, you know. So that's it. You have to have a goal for your for your, for your funds, for your inflow. And I always tell people also, it's not too bad for you to have, um, let me use the word side also, right? So like for my birthday, my friend did my, did, was my invest planner. She, she's a banker. She's an event planner. She, she planned my event. She planned my husband's birthday. I have a friend that um, she's the MC. She's a banker also. Weekends, she, yes, she, 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 she went to the event with coin, coin sparkles. She was my MC. She, 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 yeah, she was one that MC my events. That's that, that her own side also. The person I buy my perfumes from has a massive Instagram and followers. You know, she is a banker also. But you will never know she's a banker because from, the, from her page, so she will sell, she sells perfumes. Perfumes you order online, right? She'll dispatch yeah. to you. She, she, she's still doing her work. So right. as long as it's not against your HR policy, right? Some companies are for it. You can do something, you can do other things that will not, will not conflict with your job, no problem. But just be sure what your HR policy says and try to increase your income, you know? You, 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 depending on your salary alone, might not really be optimal for you in this, in this scenario, in this present Nigeria. But learn to work on your giftings and use it to earn more money for yourself, right? What I can say. And for people that are in debt, I always say that no matter how bad it is, we've been there, we've done that, and we are here. 
So it's, you you get out of it. So don't ever lose hope or give up. Yeah, that's what I can say. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you. Thank you. This is this is gold. You've dropped so much for us today. And uh, I know that this would definitely trigger certain transformation financially for a lot of people who will be watching this and the podcast version, which will be coming out in two weeks' time. And of course, um, the YouTube version, which will be putting up um, very soon as well. Thank you, Ololade, for being here. God bless you so much. You really, really give Thank us you. a lot today. And we really look forward to more people getting access to the book and learning so much and getting into a better situation. Um, and just as we round up tonight, for every, anyone who's going to be watching this, uh, summer break. <laughs> uh, Anna, summer break is here. You all know. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking a break from these live sessions for about um, five weeks thereabout, or for some weeks thereabout, till end of August, all right? But we're not going to be leaving you without, you know, resources to lean on. We're going to be starting our summer throwback series next week. And what do we do on summer throwback? We take out the top three recommended in the early years of our inception right we're going to be sharing those videos again because they are live um, information that are still relevant today and we're going to be having them properly you know packaged for you and you're going to be able to watch them on driving thursdays and then we will now take a break for about two weeks so you have three sessions still coming up but they are not live sessions but you can definitely leave your comments and your questions and faculty members and um admin team will be supporting you know to answer whatever inquiry you might have so i look forward to coming back live end of august after i've taken a break to refresh and maybe like laura day that break would also give me my own book ideas <laughs> <laughs> as well so enjoy the holidays for those who have kids on holidays already and for those whose kids are counting down to the holidays Enjoy the holidays, take time out and be with family. And um, yes, um, start doing something about your debt situation. Lock into the proper debt code, right? That would lead you into a great financial situation. Um, thank you again, Lolade, for being here. God bless you and uh, we expect you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate so. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.